Hi, this is Science Chef. In this video, we'll be showing you how to carry out the quantitative analysis for the 2023 wire chemistry practical. This year's quantitative analysis is on one organic compound and one inorganic compound, right? We'll be starting with the inorganic compound, which is a base, while the organic compound is a carbohydrate. Before we continue, please note that this video is for teachers. So if you're not a teacher, kindly skip. All right, let's start. So, as you can see, this is our inorganic compound, a specimen D, a powder, white powder, right? That's the appearance. And we'll be carrying out some tests on the solubility in water, right? We also carry out tests on the action of heat on it, and also tests for the ions present. And what we have here, we have a sodium hydroxide solution, then we have an ammonia solution here, and we have a and acid, and also we have what? A bottle of um, water here. We also have litmus anyway, in case we need it. And of course, we have a spatula, and we also have a test tube holder for it. So, we'll start with the solubility test. Let's see whether this compound is soluble or not. That's soluble in water. Take a little quantity of the compound and add it. I will test you. And add some water. What do you notice? Is it soluble? No. It gives a milky or a cloudy uh, color, kind of suspension. So it means that this is not a soluble base. It's not a soluble base. If it's not a soluble base, then Mean that it's not a one oxide, neither is it a two oxide, right? It's not a lower end of a two oxide, right? And therefore, it means that it must either be a B3 oxide, and we started from aluminium or a transition metal word oxide. That's test one, it's not soluble. It's not soluble in water. Let's try the next test. Let's see, check its solubility in acid. So, we are going to add it into quantity to and then add a little amount of what acid. And shake. Okay. What do you notice there? Wow. Can you see what I'm seeing? The solution has become what? Colorless. Can you compare it with this? Can you see the, compare the two? This is water. This is substance in water. You can see it's settled at the bottom. Can you see the deposits or the particles of the substance at the bottom of the uh, body? And you can see here, here it gives us a colorless solution in acid. which means that it's soluble in acid but not in water. So that confirms that it is a base. So it dissolves in an acid without any effervescence, right? That tells us that it is not a trial carbon before. Because if it were to be a trial carbon before, it would have evolved CO2. It would have migrated CO2 to have been seen as bubbles of what? Gases. And since there is none, it means that there it must be a metallic one oxide since it is a base. Then the next test will be carried out be the test for the ion, the metallic ion present in the piece. So we are going to take a little quantity of the solution in acid, right? Just take a little quantity, yes. Very little, you know? but that's too much. Okay, this is okay. Right? This amount is okay. So we're going to add a few drops of sodium hydroxide. Right? Add few drops of sodium hydroxide and check whether it will give us any precipitate. Can you see? Can you see? Do we have any precipitate here? Yes. Can we compare it with this? Right? Compare the two. You can see where precipitate. Right? Good. So, in drops, 
So we want to have control in our view like this. So, what do you notice? The white precipitate dissolves in excess sodium hydroxide. So, for that it was a white precipitate, so it means that it will either be zinc ion, aluminum ion, or like two ion if you are present. Right? Things that dissolve in excess. Of course, it can be any of those what three ions. So next, we are going to try to confirm the metallic ion present or the cation present using uh, ammonia solution, if necessary. Okay, we are going to take a very little quantity, very little quantity of the solution. It's too much. Try to one about one cm cube, thereabouts. Right? You have to take that little bit, otherwise, you will not get the expected result. And then we are going to add the ammonia solution. Let me see, this is ammonia solution. Okay? We are going to add it. Let's see the drops. Now, most times, the rate of this reaction is always slow because of the weakness of ammonia. Ammonia is a weak alkali or a weak precipitating agent compared to sodium hydroxide. So it takes a longer time to precipitate cation present in this compound compared to sodium hydroxide. If you check now, you will see a little precipitate somewhere around here. Can you see it? Yes, here. Yes, you can see a, a white gelatinous precipitate on the upper layer of this mixture in the water, the test tube. So, let's now add more ammonia to see what will happen. You can see more ammonia brings out the precipitate well. So, it means that the concentration of ammonia you use is also what key, right? You want to get a rapid result, then you must use, increase the concentration of your ammonia. So, now, let's now add ammonia in excess. See what will happen. Wow, it has dissolved in excess. The precipitate has dissolved in excess. We must a colorless word solution. You can compare both of them. Both of them are what colorless word solutions. This is sodium hydroxide. This is with excess ammonia. This is sodium hydroxide. While this is the water that can see the one in water, which is insoluble. Okay, so. Which cut ion, a white precipitate that is soluble in both excess sodium hydroxide and excess ammonia? Which cut ion is that? Your guess is as good as mine. Fine. So from there, you can confirm that the cut ion present in this base is zinc ion, right? A zinc ion. Alright, then you carry out the test on heat to now actually confirm whether it is zinc oxide or not. When you heat zinc oxide, there is a color change that you would expect. Zinc oxide is white when cold and yellow when hot. So you are going to heat it and see. So we are heating. We are heating the substance now. So we'll have to fast forward this. So we'll see the color is beginning to change to yellow. When you're heating, you also have to heat a little quantity, take a little quantity to heat so that the change will be more rapid. Meanwhile, this is a physical change because it's just a change of color. A change in color of the substance, when the substance is formed, right? It's white when cold and yellow when hot. It means that by the time it turns to room temperature, it will turn white again. So it's a reversible process. They may not ask you to heat. Since it's a direct test, you really like it will not be asked to heat. But you know that but once you heat it, it's only zinc oxide that will, that will be white when cold and yellow when hot. There's no other substance that gives you that, right? So it's an identification test. So and that is enough for you to identify that the substance is zinc oxide. So that's why they will not uh, tell you to heat the substance in case you are told. Fine. That's why we are just doing this in case you are asked a question on it. Just for your knowledge sake. 
So you can see. You can see yes. You may not see it clearly, but the color is now what? Yellow. Right? It's now yellow. Now bed. And the light cool after some time to come back to what? White. Right? So that shows that it's zinc. So that's that on the test for specimen D. We don't always present our work in tabular forms. We leave that to you to do so. So make sure that you put it in tabular forms. The test, observation, and inferences, right? As, as expected by the examination body. Now we've come to the end of this tutorial. The records are shown on the screen. If you're able to learn anything from this video, give us a like, subscribe to this channel if this is your first time here, and turn on your notification bell. And we'll come your way next time. Stay safe and God bless you.